for it. Please. Thank you. All right. Well, welcome everyone to the Marine Education Center Advisory Committee meeting. Um, it's a reschedule because of Veterans Day. I'm glad most of us could make it today. I think we actually might zip through the agenda in quicker than an hour, but we can use the whole hour if we need it. Um, this would mark the last uh, meeting of this um, calendar year for us, I think, before the next BOT meeting. Which So we're going to talk a bit today about um, committee terms and such. But before we do that, can I ask if anyone else has other business they wanted that I hadn't put on the agenda that I can plan for timing wise? Anything else? No? Okay, great. So why don't we uh, dig right in then? Victor, did you have something? No, no, I, I'm sorry. I, I, I just put Christy uh, on for that update. I don't know where you have him on the agenda, but I have I have I have let's, you under the uh, staff report. I thought you might want to hear Kyle's staff report, Christy. But if you have to go, you're welcome to go first. Um, I, I have a little bit of time. So. Yeah. Okay, great. So Kyle, why don't you um why don't you lay on us the uh, the staff report for the for the month, please? All right. Um. So, what's going on? Um, I am... take, oh, I'm sorry. I'm gonna interrupt you. Yep. I took notes diligently last time. Who's taking notes this time? And Anne, are you doing notes? Yeah, thank you, Anne. Appreciate it. Didn't have to twist any arms there. That was good. No problem. I am muted. I'll take. I'll take them. Thank yeah. you, Anne. Appreciate it. Okay, Kyle. Sorry to interrupt you. Go ahead. Yeah, no worries. Um, the um, the closet is getting winterized, so I could keep the water going all winter, which That's is great. Uh, good. That should be done this month. Um, I am just got contacted about a week and a half ago by the Rhinex School District, and they want all K through 12 to either come to the center or do virtual um, presentations with them. So that's cool. Um, that will be for next year. I'm just starting to plan with them uh, what kind of lessons we'll be doing and all that. Hopefully everything gets back to normal soon so they could come down, but a lot of it's gonna be virtual. Um, and that's about 1600 kids, which is cool. And then um, what else? The tanks are slowly coming back. I'm watching a blackfish, a big lady blackfish um, right now. She's, she seems to do, be doing okay. She's been in there for three weeks, um, but she's got that eye fog. So I'm not putting any fish in just yet. I'm kind of just waiting to see what happens to her. And everything else is good. The robots um, was a little delayed uh, because of me being quarantined for a little while. So we're going out this weekend to launch it. And then he's putting it into a um, science fair in two weeks. So that will be cool. Um, that's about it. Lots of, lots of boring other stuff, but those are the big things. Well, that's all right. Not too boring. Mm -hmm. um, so now that we've got kind of, oh, go ahead, Ann, please. Oh, I was going to, do I push Ray's hand or do I raise my No, you go ahead. We're not a big group today. Kyle, are you getting people coming through? Yeah, actually, um, a lot. I've been closed for a little while again because I've um, been quarantining, waiting oh. for my test results. But um, they, when I'm there, like Fridays are really busy. I actually have to keep people from coming in. Um, the cleanups are crazy busy. I know, I've been there, yeah. Yeah, I so. see that. Yeah. That's been cool. They go out in like their own pods. We don't go out together. Um, right. Okay, great. And I got that net out, Anne. I don't know if you saw. Two. There were two. Yeah. You, the second one. Yeah. That second one was hard. That second one was hard. I'm sorry. I tried. There was a net, just quickly, there was a net that came down the river and Kyle was instrumental <laughs> for helping get it out. And I sent her a picture because all the fish are migrating. And I tried to get it out, but so thank you. Yeah, and then a, a week later, another net came down. Yeah. So. They were more like a construction net, I think, from all that road work they're doing, but it was about 40 feet long and there was bunkers. I stuff. know. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Like yeah. It was, I went out with a kayak, had to hop in. It was stuck under a rock. It was a whole ordeal. <laughs> well, do you think that came from the, the um, uh, something that was put up river to stop the um, No, it looked debris? like... I don't think so. Um, yeah, okay. I think it probably came from the road, but I don't know. You might be right. It had stakes in it, so that might. Yeah. Be, yeah. Okay. Yep. 
but I right. just asking. Thank you again, Kyle. Yeah, you always come through. <laughs> uh, yeah, you do such a tremendous job with the trash pickups. I was thinking, um, I don't know if it's totally warranted, but you know, the Mamaroneck River is massive and the watershed's really big, and obviously eliminating or trying to eliminate the floatables and trash that make their way into the river would be like a goal. But um, has the village ever thought about, since we are the down, the furthest downstream before the Mamaroneck discharges to the harbor, they ever thought about putting up a boom or something along those lines to catch some of the marine debris or river debris before it turns into marine debris and Kyle's out cleaning it up? Like the one that the Bronx River um, yeah, I alliance. Actually, Peter, I, I glad you brought that up. I am working um, with a, like a temporary one with the Girl Scouts um, to put at the mouth it will just be floatable. It won't have any net or anything. It'll just right. be floatables. And that's for, again, for, to see if the robot can go out and kind of clean it up um, each oh, day. Nice. So that's smart. Yeah. it will see. Yeah. And I'm using like old buoys and everything too. And uh, I was going to volunteer Brendan. He could go clean it every day, but it'd probably be better <laughs> yeah. to use the robot. That's a much better if, idea. If, the, if we don't have access to the, the idea is if we don't have access to the robot for a day it will like pull in by itself and bring everything in so it's um it's a work in progress but it will be temporary and i you know it's just uh in the making i haven't gotten approval or anything but yeah i'm sure there's some permits we need yeah, to, exactly. to do that yeah we got a couple hands up oh, maybe sarah first i'm sorry sarah go for it um historically i don't know how many years ago but the um uh the Harbor Alliance. What? What is? What? And what was the? What's the group that brought you into us? That the, that's what I was going to comment. The Harbor Island Conservancy. Yeah, they they donated a. I think they called it a leaf, um, uh, something or other. But it was like a boom, and they cut. They put it in the river, um, between um, the, the two bridges. Uh, the one at the at the train station, and then and then is it Phillips? Well, will you go down? We used we used to have that motorcycle place. I don't remember what, but you know where you walk, and and it caused an enormous problem. Huge, huge things got caught in it, and it was as there was about ten thousand dollars donation. I don't know where it is. Somebody may have thrown it out. It's a long oh. time. Yeah, that's what I was going to comment on, Sarah, is that I I just happened to have a meeting with June and I was telling her about this piece. She was wondering if it was that boom, but it was the cost. Oh, yeah. The cost of it was far exceeding that amount. And she under thought that it was still there. And she was wondering if what came down the river, Kyle, was part of that. I couldn't think of the name, bo the boom. Oh, uh, yeah, this looks like it. You would, if this was in the river, you'd have to get a permit from the DEC. The one that I'm making is just floatables. This one would have went completely down to the bottom and disrupted anything coming through or up. The yeah, and even just a boom might require a permit. Yeah, um, just uh, this uh, one was uh, just going to be like, see what comes down in 24 hours, have the robot go out just for data, you know, yeah. right now. And to, oh, I love it, it's yeah. great. But it might be something to work with, you know, the, the BOT and maybe even DPW and others and make it a project because the Mamaroneck watershed, like I said, is massive. I'm not saying the village is contributing all that trash, no, but it's, yeah. at the, it's at the end of the river and it's mm -hmm. catching it all as it comes down. And I'll be bringing to people on soon, so I'll have more time to do. So my, my recommendation would be to touch base with Christian Murphy at the Bronx River Alliance. I don't know if you know him, but he pretty much oversees their boom over the Bronx River. And they do a lot of really good um, data analysis on what they pull out and like volume and mass and all of that. So Christian Murphy, um, and then if you can't, you'll catch him. He's a good guy and you can find him. Okay. Uh, Michelle Lubke is the other person that works on the boom at the Bronx River. And they'd be really good to talk to about how they do it, the permitting, what was necessary, et cetera. Christian, Christian what was it? Sorry. Murphy. Murphy, okay. Got it. I think Dan Sarnoff would know about the that other boom that, that was. Yeah, there. and look into what, what might already be available. Yeah, Dan was, was around when that happened. Yeah. Okay. Victor, yeah. Thank you. yeah. Very briefly, I'll just pick it up. I'll talk with Dan Sarnoff. And Kyle, let, let's work together. I'll, I'll help the liaison to make this project work. Okay. I'll, I'll pull in, I don't want too many people, but I want I, uh, Jason, you with, between you and Jason, we take it to Jerry, we get this and we get this moving. 
We'll put, we'll make it, we'll make it happen next year. And of course we have Christy, we need some permits. Let, let's move on it. Let's move, and, and of course we have, we have the conservancy. So let, well, let's keep this conversation. I'm very interested in moving this forward. I think we could make a big yeah. dent on yes. it, it, it. This year has been, the water quality has been great, but floatables have, are, are, are skyrocketing. Out of yeah. control, yeah. yeah. Out of control. So I think we all realize that something has to be done. Good. That's Especially awesome. with the, the kids out of school, they're all in the parks. I mean, I've noticed a ton in the rivers. It's un, it's unreal. And people are like, it must go down. I'm like, it's it's crazy this year how much is coming out of there. So right, Good project to queue up. Any other big updates for you before we kick it over to Christy, Kyle? That's it. Any questions for Kyle that people might have? Not now. She's going to be with us for the rest of the meeting. Maybe we'll let Christy um, talk to us about um, donation and funding. And then um, we can always loop back with you, Kyle. Thank you so much. Hey, Victor, is there anything you wanted to start with before I dive in? You want me to just dive in? <laughs> okay, great. Um, so Victor has asked me, and I was actually approached as well by Helen Rafferty before about um, soliciting donations for the Marine Education Center. Um, so initially when we were looking at it, the idea was of possibly creating a nonprofit, um, a friends can, can of I interrupt you for a sec? Yeah. I actually, I don't know your background. I'm so, I'm terribly sorry. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Um, I'm, I'm the deputy village attorney for the village of Mamaroneck. So oh. I work under Bob Spolzino. He is village attorney. Um, so that is my connection. I apologize. I, I didn't realize I wasn't known. I should have started with. Oh, it. that's fine. Thank you so much. Of course. Nice. Um, so we were looking at the possibility of creating a, like I said, a nonprofit where donations could be funneled through the nonprofit. Um, again, it would be called the Friends of the Marine Education Center. But during the call about the nonprofit, some questions came up about, is it possible to um, add a link to the website for a PayPal account to solicit donations or whatever it may be? Helen had also mentioned that um, they had previously done a letter writing campaign. Um, so when that was initially discussed, my understanding was, and this was an error, that she had, it was part of the village that had done this, this donation drive. And so I was like, well, that's odd that you can send out letters requesting donations, but you can't put a link on your website, right? So then I sort of dived in um, through the totality of it to get a good understanding of what can and can't be done. Is it possible to create a PayPal account? Can we create a link to that? how can we go about um, soliciting donations? What, it, what are the um, guidelines for it? So I don't have, unfortunately, great news. Um, so in terms of donations, the Office of State Comptroller has stated that municipalities are not permitted to solicit donations. And there's really only two ways that municipalities can. So one way is through state statute, which in this case would be the general municipal law and the village law, neither of which permit um, the municipality to, to solicit donations. Um, the other idea is through fair market value, which essentially means that it's like an exchange of, I, I don't want to say goods and services, but it's essentially, you, I'm going to give you $2,000 and you have to give me something equal in return. So um, that context came up, I saw in terms of advertising. So let's say the village on um, the MEC website slotted out certain spaces for advertising. So TD Bank says, I'm gonna give you $4,000. You need to give me your biggest banner. The problem with that, and this is something that I need to explore a little bit more is in order to allow advertising and not be in violation of the first amendment, I think anybody that wants to advertise would be permitted to advertise. And so that could possibly be an issue because you may have an organization that you're not, you know, it's a little bit iffy. It's maybe not something that that carries MEC's cause or whatever it may be. And also at that point, you would have to confer with the village about that being permitted because I know I talked to Dan Sarnoff about it as well, who's the assistant village manager. He said that they've generally avoided advertising. I don't no, if maybe I'm not creative enough to think of other ways and other services that could be exchanged. Some people do bake sales, but that's not, you know, that's not going to get you the donations you need. Um, no one's going to give you $2,000 for a pie and that's not fair market value. Um, so we're sort of in a situation where 
we're back to this idea of a friends of. Um, I think that's going to be your greatest route. You can proceed with these letter writing campaigns, which Helena talked about, but it has to be from individuals. So each of you or whatever group you get together could send out letters, but not on village letterhead. It would have to be totally on your own saying, you know, I support the Marine Education Center. They do great things within the village. We're having a fundraising drive and we will provide those donations. Um, so that, that is one route. And then, like I said, the other route that I think will likely work best is that nonprofit. So moving forward with establishing the nonprofit, um, using that, creating a separate website, creating um, the whole kit and caboodle to be able to have the freedom to fundraise like you want. Those donations that you garner through the Friends of MEC will have to be gifted essentially to the village and then the board of trustees as the normal process is with any donation for, for MEC will receive those gifts or agree to accept the gifts. So unfortunately it's kind of a tricky situation because you are associated with the municipality um, that we have to go about these, these kind of odd routes to, to get the donations. Hey, Chris, they have one question about the mm -hmm. advertising on the site. Um, is there, uh, is there a exact definition of what advertising might look like or could it be if we got some sort of corporate donation from TD Bank or, or whatever, I believe was the example you had, that it's essentially just like a collection of logos at the bottom? Oh. So I'm, you know, I thought about that as well. And I truthfully, this is something that I came across more recently. So I need to explore it a bit more to see what that, what those boundaries would look like. Um, like I said, what really popped out to me most was the idea that you may have people requesting advertisements who you right. want on your website. Um, even if it's just a logo, it's something to be mindful of. Um, and again, like I said, it, it's something that I need to explore a bit further. I think I don't know what, I guess the idea would be, is that fair market if they're giving you $5,000 and just their name is on the website? Um, maybe it is, that, that often happens when you're looking at nonprofit websites, right? That it's whatever it may be, it's just a small, small logo. So um, it is something that I would have to explore a little bit further if it was something that MEC was interested in. Great, thank you. Victor, I see you had a... Yes. Uh, if if the letters go out from individuals, but there would be, the letters would say, if you're interested, you don't need to send a check because they're, I think part of the problem is the method of payment. Mm -hmm. but they say, uh, you can go to PayPal. They set it up. This is, this is, so the residents set it up. And of course the PayPal will, will you know, um, identify or break down which, who donated, right. when, $200, 50, 10, 20. And then let's say at the end of the month or the next month, the board of trustees could say, as we do every second week or so, you know, for a bench or $200 or something for the, for, for our, uh, you know, for the fish tanks or something, right? Uh, we could say, you know, we, we got this list and this, mm -hmm. all these donations could be accepted. So how about this method of collection? Is that is so, that doable? Once you, I think, once you figure out the solicitation and, mm -hmm. and not make, can, 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 as, can that work? So I think the question with that is, if I remember correctly, because I believe Helen might have asked Augie about this, but um, Augie Fusco, the clerk treasurer, he, he has some knowledge on this as well. Um, the idea was that I think whoever maintains the PayPal, it, it would, like we'd, I don't think the village necessarily would be able to maintain the PayPal account because of tax purposes. So I think it would have to harken back to, like I said, a Friends of MEC organization. So if the Friends of MEC were running it, they could collect those PayPal donations. I believe Helen had figured out a way that it could be once a month, it sort of takes all your donations together and then take, send, would send it to the board of trustees. So. I unfortunately, in terms of the technicality of that, I, I'm not entirely sure, but I think as long as you have that PayPal set up, like I said, through Friends of MEC, because again, of those tax purposes that I, if there is a way to do it so that 
the village is just able to kind of accept those donations, then it's permissible. Yeah. I think you're on mute. Go yeah, ahead. I'm. I'm. Per, um, thank you. Um. So with the with the PayPal, if you could just note it because I I've dealt with this in the past is that whenever you set it up, there's a very specific way to reduce the fees. Mm -hmm. Um. If you're setting it up with the nonprofit, that they don't let you know up front. You have to ask for it. It's like a hidden mm -hmm. uh, thing. Uh, notice about with the PayPal. Mm -hmm. um so just i know it may be a little premature but it, it's certainly worth the asterisk to to keep in mind who, who and when you're able to set it up because it has to be done at the time of the origination right the, okay. the fees are substantially less uh that it would add up over the time yeah right and that's something, um, like I said, that Augie might be helpful in assisting with when it gets to the sort of coordinating how we're going to funnel that money. And so maybe if the Friends of MEC is created, we go through that route, Augie can, can work with who's ever on this committee and see if they can set up that PayPal so that it, it funnels those donations properly and gets those, those uh, nonprofit benefits. That makes sense. I have a question uh, too. Actually, one, uh, I think you, maybe Christy, you mentioned that the friends of the MEC, if they form like a 5013C, mm -hmm. um, they would have to solicit funds and then specifically tell people they were going to the village in their solicitations? Um, you know, that's a good question. My assumption is that you know, you, I don't know if you would have to say the village of Mamaroneck, but you would say that the funds would be going to the Marine Education Center. Um, yeah, in terms of clarity, I'm not sure if you would specifically say Marine Education Center owned and operated by the village of Meredith, probably to, to be totally transparent so that people know exactly where their donations are going. Yeah. And I don't mean to put it out there, but that could deter some people. Just I know, it is a tricky like, situation. I think, I th and I know that that was, that was something um, prior that there was a concern that people don't want to donate to what they think is the village, but I, you know, perhaps it's it's phrased in such a way that it's Marine Education Center first and foremost, it's small <laughs> owned and operate, right? Um, I think that more is sort of like an advertising, but um, I think it has to be clear where your donations are going to. Whoever is writing the donation can make it a condition that the donation has to be given directly to the Marine Education Center. Um, so that's that something to be mindful of. That would be important, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it, it's a, it's like a condition of giving that donation yeah. must be given to the Marine Education it's Center. It's a restricted, so. restricted fund. Go ahead, Sarah, because I think I forgot my second one, but I have another one. Go ahead. Um, Christy, is, is there a um, possibility of um, people joining, uh, joining the, becoming a friend of the um, MEC? And as that, that means like they have membership at the club, I mean, at the, down at the MEC, not, you know, in other words, that would be a way of donating that, and then you get everybody, not that you couldn't go in there without being a friend, but it'd be a way of, of doing it. Well, so if you do establish the friends of MEC, there's really, and, and maybe I don't understand your, your um, question directly, but there's really no stipulation on your donation. So it's not the same idea that you have to exchange these, these goods and services. It's, if you're going through the MEC, people can just donate directly to the MEC for those funds to go back to the village. So yeah, I'm sure you could set something up, some type of membership program for the MEC with that money going to the Friends of, but you don't have to do that. Yeah, I'm familiar with Friends groups. I used to be the president of the board of the Friends of Greenwich Point, and we did a lot of municipal projects with Greenwich. Um, but you know, it's always a little tricky, like raising funds to pay for town staff and then like, I don't know what well, I'm keeping so, them in. So I actually also at one point thought that the staff for MEC was actually funded through the, through through donations. So you might want to clarify that it's not that you're not paying for like Kyle to work there. Yeah, you're, not you're, paying, you're really paying for these big projects, right? So my understanding is like new tanks or whatever it is that you need to do. I mean, there's and I think one thing to emphasize. I mean, and this is really just my idea, I would, not my idea, but a thought is, I mean, you really have the ability to grow. You're in such a great point on the harbor. So maybe part of that campaign is to focus on these larger projects that can really grow the organization, which I'm sure you're already 
aiming to do, but and maybe explain your donation is not to staff, it's not to, you know, it's not going to Jerry Barbario's gas for his truck, you know what I mean? It's yeah. really specific projects for them. Is days. Jerry driving a big truck around these days? <laughs> yeah, he has a big yeah, truck. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Um, I guess also it was a lot of it was like when we had to pay Greenwich like rec staff to do projects at the point because they were the only people in the union able to do projects at the you know what I mean it gets a little tricky but the next thing I was going to ask was um which was something else have you seen this like where else does this exist so that that wasn't a good experience Brands of Greenwich Point was like we were we are and that still is a group that does projects at Greenwich Point like that's their focus but have we seen a friends of group that supports a marine education center that's run by a municipality or would this be pretty unique? You know, I'm not aware of one. The only way that um, my personal involvement is I'm in part, I actually just um, joined a board where we filed for friends of status for an animal organization for animals in Lebanon. And so they have an organization called Animals Lebanon in Lebanon, they're having difficulties with funds. So I worked with a friend of mine to create this organization called Friends Of in the US in hopes of getting that funding to them. So I have to be honest that in terms of other than that, I, I'm not fully aware, especially of a marine organization, but that doesn't mean they don't exist. I just don't, I'm not totally aware of it. The, the Larchmont Library has a Friends organization. Yes, I believe there's a there's a few and friends of libraries. The Marinick has a friends organization. The Marinick does not need a friends organization because it can, it's not connected with the, it's not, it has a separate line in the budget. So it's not, mm -hmm. not a municipal uh, library. I mean, it's, it's right. got its own, own funding. And so it can, it can raise its own, but Larchmont can't. It's, it's all, uh, so that you could look into that as to the difference between them. Yes, that's, certainly. That's why I, I mentioned about being um, becoming a member because a lot of people like to be a member of the, uh, join the Friends of Larchmont where they get a newsletter, they get mm -hmm. notices of going to all this stuff and, and it's $15 and they feel like they're getting something for it. Yeah. That's a good point, Sarah. And we brought that up in previous committee members uh, earlier on in our advisory committee meetings, remember? And it was just decided we wouldn't do it through this committee, but it would work great for a friends group. Um, to have members. It doesn't mean that you become a friend. It doesn't mean you can't, you can't, you don't have to be a friend of the, of the Marine Center to go into it. No, no, no. Yeah, no, no. It's just kind of like added benefits that come with it. Yeah. Whatever those might be. Sometimes it's swag. Sometimes it's like special events. Sometimes. Yeah, a lifesaver and a smile. Yeah. I don't want to belabor the conversation, but Chrissy, one other question for you. Um, through the Friends of Association, or if we do a, you know, a nonprofit or whatever, is there any governor on what type of fundraising activity can be done? In, in my mind, as we're thinking about benefits or things like that, you know, there's, there's Patreon or, or uh, GoFundMe where if you sponsor at a certain level, mm -hmm. you get something in return. So if you donate Fifty dollars, you get a tote bag. You a hundred dollars, you get something. You know, thousand dollars. So it, uh, it, it that would be maybe something that we might want to look at, or through that nonprofit, if you will. But it, because there's an association with the villages, is, is that not allowed, or would it be allowed? Uh, not that I'm aware of, but I mean, I don't think it would say Marine Education Center. It would probably say friends of MEC, whatever that advertising would be, would likely have to be, that's my assumption. I'm, I'm not totally sure, but um, I think it would be through the, again, through friends of. Okay. So, um, but I don't see why there would be any limitation on doing something along those lines. Um, if I remember correctly, it's either the certificate of incorporation or the bylaws for the nonprofit where you lay out how you're going to be doing fundraising or where you're going to be getting your funds from. So I think that would be the only place where there would be maybe a limitation um, if you didn't describe some route, like for instance, you want to, you would, if they want to go grants, we should put that there would be applications for grants or whatever it may be. Um, but otherwise, I, I don't know of any limitations along those lines. All right. Thank you. Okay. I hope it was somewhat helpful. I'm sorry I didn't yes. come with them. Um, PayPal banners ready. <laughs> oh, but it's incredibly helpful because it's something that comes up uh, now and then and it's good to just hear it right from the source. So thank That's you so much good. for joining and just giving it kind of 
telling us how it is. <laughs> you right. know, we took yeah. fundraising out of the the um, responsibilities of this committee, um, regardless. But it's still something that comes up and we're interested in. So it's really good to get the boundaries from you directly. Right, and if you are able to put together a group of people, um, like I said, that are not directly associated with you, but again, I, we talked to, we spoke to Helen, maybe Helen, I know she had a couple people in mind that she'd be able to create a board, go officers, et cetera, and kind of grow from there. Yeah. And then who knows? I mean, the sky's the limit from there. It could really change. It could even change the dynamic of the center even a little bit, but you know, that could be way down the line um, when you talk about bigger expansions and such. Right. Um, okay, cool. Well, that was, that was really, really, I, I think there has one more. Yeah, go for it. I think that's in the next step. So, so I want to thank Christy for coming on board. I think she leaves, leaves the next step. Maybe for 2021, we can you know, give it a try because I think we're ready to grow. And you know, it's, it's, it's a good time. People want to do good things, good, good local things and combinations. More people are working from home. I mean, it's, it's a perfect time. I think we could, we could give it a try and we could have a joint meeting with them. So, but, but you, you, you're, you're the chair. So. No, no, you're spot on. That's what we would do. We would have a joint okay. meeting, probably scheduled in at least twice a year. I don't know. I'm just arbitrarily putting that out there, but we have kind of constant meetings okay. scheduled for the year where we can meet up. Thank you, Christy. Thank you, everyone. Thank it was nice to see you all. Thank you. Bye. Bye. See Bye. you at the harbor. Oh, yeah. You guys have a harbor uh, commission meeting tonight, right? Uh, okay, great. Thank you, Victor, for setting that up. That was really helpful. Uh, I'm going to pull up. Can I share my screen, Joe? Yes, I can. Uh, I'm going to pull up the committee terms. That's the next thing we want to go over. Um, is this big enough? It's on my screen, but it might be kind of small. Hopefully, can you all see this? Yeah, it looks good, Pete. Yeah, it looks good. Okay, great. Thank you. All right, so here's looking at who's on the committee now. So um, I'm going to point two things out. One, I'll contact Jim, but I have not heard from, I don't know if, I hope Jim's doing okay and Catherine. I haven't heard from them for a while, so we might want to touch base with him. Who does that? Should I do it as the chair? Be like, hey, how's it going? You sure you want to? Okay. And if he wants to roll off or come off early, he just needs to write a short letter and submit it to Sally, I believe. I think that might be the case. I haven't heard from him in like six months. Has anyone seen Jim in the last six months? Sarah? No. Okay, I hope everything's okay over at the Desmonds. I'm gonna give them a call um, and I'll touch base with Jim. We and went then, to the center a couple of times, Peter, but. You've seen them? Good, good. I'd really love the Desmonds. I wanna make sure they're doing okay first and foremost. Uh, seriously. And then um, Eddie, I know for a fact has mentioned that he's, um, got other things personally, the, the pandemic was definitely not easy on his business. So he's he's ready to kind of come off too. So those are two that are likely um, not gonna be on the board moving forward. I, I didn't, I well, I did when I read this, but my term's expiring, but I've already written to, the, um, to uh, Sally and the BOT saying I'd like to continue on. So I'd be honored and happy to do that if I get appointed. Um, and- So I was mentioning to Sarah, I thought I'd ping them in the beginning. They had a deadline of November 13th, um, but I just pinged her again the other day, the treasure, clerk treasurer making my request. Okay. But I didn't hear back and I have to change my address because as of Monday I've moved, but I'm still in the village. So I hope that I could be reappointed. <laughs> I'm happy. Okay, great. So thank you for following up with them again though, just to make sure that they received the information. Let me thank you. Let me thank you that you too, and I, I can tell you from right now, I'm going to nominate you too. Thank you so much for what you do. <laughs> thank you. Victor. Look at my nomination. I'm going to try to get a second. Okay. Thank you, Victor. Um, Sarah and I have talked. Sarah, do you want to um, express where your head is now with the with your term? Well, I thought that I was uh, my term was up, and so I I didn't. It was just I thought that meant that that was up, but I realized I I. It's, it's up to me, it's not up to the, um, so um, at the moment I'm, I'm sort of thinking about it because I, I really didn't think, I didn't think it, that was that was what the point was. I mean, that I, I thought it was, and you, I thought you were the one who had one more year. Yeah, right, you expressed that. So just think about it a little bit, but I think they need an answer pretty soon because the December BOT, they probably sent a deadline like Ann said, but the um, December 
well, you're on anyways from 2021. Excuse me. I take that back. But know that you don't have to like if things come up and it, it just has become uh, you can write to Sally and just say, you know, thank you, but I'm not going to finish up this last year. But then we just know that the slots open. Right. OK, great. Um, we talked about Jim. Brendan, we're, we're counting on you to stick through on your term for next year. You got it. How awkward it would be if you guys were like, nah, nah. <laughs> right, this is my last I hadn't, I hadn't fully thought through how we would go through this process. It's more of a roll call. So, um, OK, good to hear, Brendan. It's a pleasure having you. I believe Doug really wants to continue on. Like I said, he's just having trouble with Wednesdays. So we might just look to change the date for him. Yeah, I, I talked to Doug. He definitely wants to stay on, but it's impossible because of work considerations. Um, so if we can look for an alternative time, then I, I think that's one spot we can save on the on the roster. Yeah, I'd like to keep him on. You know, what we could consider doing um, is moving it like a little bit outside of your general work. I don't know if I don't like, you know, if Doug, if that's an issue, if it's at four and not six or something, um, if that's an issue for him, but we can, we could talk more with him. It seems like Wednesdays also just aren't good. Yeah. Um, he and I are getting together on Friday. We haven't seen each other in a little bit. So uh, I'll chat with him on like what might work and yeah. ask him to ping you or. Yeah. Could you please? <laughs> yeah, that, that would be great. Thank you very much. Um, we'd love to have him stay on. And like I said, Eddie, um, Eddie knows, I don't know if he actually, if he followed through yet, but he, like I said, is rolling off and uh, he knows to either write BOT or write Sally to let them know. I've been in communication with him on that already. Victor, are we keep, do, when do we know who our liaison will be? Is that going to be you? Yeah, I have to talk with my colleagues to see if uh, All right. somebody wants to move me out. I, I'll see. Okay, of course. Uh, I know it's been a little, I've been done, I've contributed, but I, no, I hope if some of these things, uh, you know, get some wind behind them, I would, I would love to see it, it, some things grow and some things happen. So it's been a tough year because of, 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 of budget constraints and next year is not going to be a different. So that's where you need to find alternatives. And, but I, I am also interested in, in moving up kind of all the water issues finally kind of, and I think now is the time. So anyway, I'm okay. going to try, I'm going to try. Oh, you've been great. Thank you. It's actually worked out really well with you on. It's been a pleasure working with you as always. So that's our, those are our committee terms. Sarah, you know, to write Sally, if, if you, um, with your decision, everyone else is sticking on. Um, and the next, this kind of is a good segue then into the committee fair update. Um, Brendan, you want to update people on that one? You were on that committee fair. Yeah, sorry. Uh, committee fair update was good. We had what, two or three people yeah. join. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I think there was some uh, real interest in joining uh, from from the two people that joined. We had a third. I don't know if she ever got back in touch, yeah. a third person. But, um, yeah, no, we, uh, you know, Peter did a great job uh, introducing everything. Uh, mm -hmm. Kyle did a great job talking about her work, and I cracked a couple of jokes here or there. So it was, it was, it was good. But uh, I, I think if, if both of the participants want to continue um, through the process, I think they'd be very good additions. Uh, one gentleman's really good at grant writing, yeah. for example. So that would be huge. Yeah. Um, so I, I think it's, uh, I think it'd be really good if they continue to join. Kyle, you have any thoughts on that one? You were, Kyle was with us as well. Oh yeah, I, I, I um, like them both. I know uh, Caroline really well, so. That's right. That's right. You know, Caroline and her family. I, I found Caroline's enthusiasm was infectious. Definitely. Yeah. So and like, just really that bring, just bringing that to the table would be great. And any, you know, and we explained just having that char characteristic alone would be phenomenal for this committee. It's not all skill sets at all. And I'm sure she's going to bring a phenomenal set of skills too. And the, the gentleman, I'm forgetting his name, but he's also a social science professor at, um, Fordham uh, Westchester, is that what he said? Yeah, and he might be really good in, in addition to the grant writing, which of course it was like, yeah, I'm sure Kyle was stoked on that. He could be really good about doing like qualitative surveys and kind of assessments of our um, visitors. And he might be really useful for that kind of work because um, he's he probably worked, he does, he works in that sphere of qualitative data and surveys and kind of um, social stuff. So that could be really kind of useful for us too, I would think. So 
we'll see. Hopefully they both uh, submit their letters and uh, we have them uh, join us in December. I think at this point, it's a little bit out of our, Sally's not with us right now. I'm sure that they got a follow up, like, thank you. Um, but I think at this point it's on them just to submit that resume and letter and then um, the BOT will look to appoint them. Thank you both for doing that. I, I, that was, it was fun. I, I really enjoyed it. It was, it was just good to talk, talk it out. I'll, right, I'll keep so, an eye, Peter, yeah. I'll keep an eye, I'll keep an eye on it. I, 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 I'll keep an eye on it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and if they have any questions, make sure that they get to us. If they're asking us directly, please. I don't have their contact information. I know I should know this just from the raw math. How many, we, we have three slots open right now. <laughs> Let me pull it back up. <laughs> We're gonna have one, definitely two opened up. And I forget how many we, oh gosh, I forget what our cap is. I should know that. Victor, do you remember if there's a cap on the committee on how many people we can have? I think it's in our, um, it's like a range. Yeah. We have at least, at least two. Yeah, I'll check that. Thanks. What were you thinking? You have someone else in mind that might be good? I just, depending on what that number is, how hard we, you know, try and recruit uh, additional people outside of it. So um, just want to see how many people I need to put the blast on. <laughs> Thanks for asking. Um, I'll try to pull that up actually while people are talking about a couple other things. I might have it in my files. I probably do. Um, all right, great. So Anne and the speaker, Anne, I'm sorry, you had emailed me about this and I didn't get back to you. Um, so why don't we just talk out this speaker opportunity? It doesn't have to be in December. It, it, whenever it happens, it happens. Um, but why don't you let us know where you're at? And then if we can all come together on a plan, that'd be great. This is our Woods Hole Oceanographic Institute speaker. Well, that's the whole thing is like, he never gets back to me. I mean, even like you said, uh, we're going to push it off, but I, he agreed to do it. And then I asked him, <laughs> excuse me, for the, his bio or some brief, so we could get some uh, advertisement, uh, you know, some um, banner. Uh, I'm sorry, my mind is blank today. You know, like um, a uh, yeah, start advertising it. An advertisement, and then I'm like a little short on that because I just don't have the like an Adobe or a a uh, type program to do that. So why I see Brandon, are you, would you be the best that we could work? If I pinged you when we do have a speaker, are you the best to put something together? Oh no, I've always had staff that did that stuff. I don't know how to do any of it. Oh yeah, that's where I'm stuck at. I mean, I did one originally, uh, my son did it, but he doesn't have Adobe anymore. So I, I don't know how I can, uh, where are you going to have it? Well, that, you know, that's my other plight is that I, I'm not such a Zoom person. This is the only Zoom program I participate in. So I'm not, um, it, it's hard for me to concept, you know, have the concept of doing all this. Right, library would be willing to, to do that. And I mean, they, um, and but they you can't have a gathering. Hmm? You can't have more than 10 people in a building. Right. Well, I didn't mean that they'd be willing to push, you know, be the sponsors. Yeah, we were, we talked about doing it via Zoom, but they might be, the library might be up for doing the sponsors. Joe, could you help out on this one, actually, from the village perspective? Um, I think it's Rich that actually sets these meetings up, but who on the village could help with just setting up a Zoom slot if we did want to do that? Um, I mean, I could do it or even Sally. Yeah. Well, I asked Sally and then she reverted me back to Kyle. Uh, <laughs> That's where um, I was confused. Like, I didn't know. I would what email to do. Sally and Joe. Do you have Joe, Joe's emails on our um, invites? And then yeah. they can help I set mean, up a time. I do more of like the, you know, the tech side, but I mean, I could set up a slot or, you know, point you guys in the right direction if that's what you're looking to do. So I, I don't know. <laughs> One is <clears throat> how to get a flyer or something together. I just don't have the program. I can try to do more of it. I'm not a tech person at all. <laughs> um, so I, I need a little help with that. But then how, to, how do we um, advertise or where would you advertise? Well, that's where I think Brendan might be able to jump in and help out a little bit on the advertising side, right, Brendan? Yeah, well, if we want to go 
far and wide, I, I assume that there, there are newsletters within the town that the town pushes out. We could do that. Um, and then, uh, you know, uh, we could certainly try and, you know, paying reporters to talk to them about it, but it's, you know, kind of like a Zoom meeting, a program that they wouldn't be interested in. So my thought is that it would be back to, you know, whatever advertising mechanisms that the village has in place, uh, newsletters or what have you, if it's done through the library, you know, I know the library, I'm on the email that I get weekly from them. So there, there could be ways that we activate the community on that front. Yeah, it's a good call. And then Kyle, I would think our constant contact list would also be um, uh, somewhere we could send out a constant contact blast about it, e-blast yeah. and social media. LMC TV. LMC TV, certainly. I, I'm gonna make a recommendation. If we put it out far enough, like if, if we don't try, what I've seen happen too often with these type of things is like, oh, we're gonna do it in three weeks. Or, all right, we're gonna do it in early December. Yeah. And it's just not enough time. Mm -hmm. If we say, all right, we're doing it in the spring and we get a date in the spring, I, I can guarantee you that we'll get it on social media. Kyle can has plenty of time. Kyle, I'm sorry if I'm talking for you, but to put it on constant contact and then we could just get it through the libraries. It's just getting the date, getting the thing set well in advance. I don't think as a group we'll have trouble advertising it and getting the word out. Personally. Do you or does anyone know any type of like Adobe or how how to make up a flyer? You I know? would even I would just do it in Word. I would just put a oh, picture okay. in Word yeah. and then just put a nice okay. description in and that I could do. Yeah, and then save it as a PDF, you know, make it a half page, you know, and just keep it pretty simple. So I just didn't know how to follow up with this man. I didn't want to be troublesome to him, but I have pinged him, you know, every couple of weeks. And no, oh, and he hasn't gotten back. I hope there's not, something hasn't happened because he did respond early on, saying he would have loved to do it. Right? And he would do it, and then he said, you know, I'll send you the information. And then I follow. I've followed up more than two times already. No, oh, and you didn't come through. You know, honestly, we could pick someone else. We don't what, have to. We don't have to use them. What were we asking him to talk about? specifically yeah he's a he's a um he's like an ichthyologist so he's like a fish researcher okay. and he does a lot of work with sharks which is what um i've seen him talk about in the past yeah. tagging and he does some really cool rov programs where like they follow the shark tags and film the it's pretty incredible work actually um but you know we don't have to we could get someone else for what it's worth i got a really good friend um who is a uh, department chair of marine and environmental programs for the University of New England. Uh, he owes me a couple, so. There you go. I don't know, Kyle, if you've ever run across him. His name is Noah Perlet. Mm. Okay, he's a good guy, but you know, maybe maybe it could be a you know, discussion between Kyle and, and Noah or whoever, but I, I'm happy to ping Noah and see if he'd be interested. I think that'd be great. What would he talk about? Do you know what his focus is? Uh, he, he he used to be an ornithologist. He he studies marine life. Uh, he's he's kind of a no ornithologist. You have me there, man. There's a lot of people that love birds. I, <laughs> so we brought in an ornithologist that focuses on marine like waterfowl and such. I'm sure it'd be a hit. yeah. I, I think it'd be a good conversation given Kyle's you know former life. Uh, he was an ornithologist for four years in 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 the <laughs> bird world, but uh, you know. <laughs> So uh, it, it, yeah, I'll look at his research a little bit, but I, you know, I could definitely say, hey, would you be interested in doing this? Because um, he does study that kind of like cycle on the flows of of marine life, and see if he if he's got like a stock presentation that he gives. And that we most of them do. Time. Most of them definitely. I can speak for me. I have like three, so most of them have stock presentations that they can give. And yeah, it, that, it that would be great, and then it makes it me more comfortable just like pushing forward that we someone to respond to because I didn't want to work on something and then the man the person's not responding it's sort of oh yeah yeah and I'd encourage okay. you to take Brendan up on that follow up with him and I will and yeah kind of, thank you Brendan don't even don't include me on that you three can just take that away um thank you but yeah again just get the speaker get the time and then everything else is going to fall into place I guarantee yeah. you just give yourself plenty of time maybe we shoot for the spring now give yourself give ourselves plenty of time make it like a spring thing um, and then um, once you have a date, a speaker, you could get the ad, and then we can just start pushing it out as in many places as possible. Perfect. Okay, I'll pay. I'll follow up with you, Brendan. Thank you. All right, sounds good. Yeah, and I have a feeling Save the Sound will be happy to help out a little bit too, especially because it's you know 
New England kind of focus, Long Island okay. Sound focused. I'm sure we can help a little bit too with getting the word out. All right, so we got about five minutes. Yeah, Victor. I was going to say at that at that point we we should not worry about a flyer or, or other small things. The village will will we, we we can talk with Jerry and we can get we can get you know those things done. So once yeah. we have all the other pieces, the big ones, that should not limit us. Yeah, good point, Victor. I think a picture, a blurb, and a time are the most important, and then the rest of it can just fall into place really easily. Um, okay, so last up on the agenda, unless there's other business, is the bio extraction project. I put it under education. I just wanted to let you know we're, we're almost done with the permitting on that. That's going to be the sugar kelp project I was talking about last month. And uh, I will follow up with um, Brendan and Kyle, Brendan and Kyle. Um, on that and hopefully we can get maybe some press out on a uh, boat like we talked about. It's going to be out there from December to May. Um, so maybe we shoot for like a January or February date um, after it's somewhat established and on one of our monthly checks we could go out together, Kyle, and uh, maybe bring some press. Press does like to get out on the water and see projects. So it could be a cool opportunity for us to do that together. So still ongoing and it's happening. Can, uh, Peter, can you shoot me all the background information just that we might have on that, just so I can formulate, you know, proper pitch to the report? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, uh, I'd just like to reiterate that I want to go on a boat too. So <laughs> multiple times. So let me know when I can join you. You're welcome to come too. Absolutely. I've got a kayak anytime you want, Brendan. Uh, we've got a couple in the backyard. Yeah. I, uh... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I, I stayed quiet about the uh, the trash because it's uh, really bad in Guyon Creek. So. Mm. Oh, in Guyon Creek, yeah. yeah. Oh, it's, it's awful it's, back there. It's awful. It's, it's, it's the worst that I've seen in the six years that we've worked that, here. That's where we get most of it, but it just it keeps coming. Is yep. it coming from Beaver Swamp Brook, Guyon Creek, or is it flushing into that area? I think it's flushing, flushing in, right? Flushing in, I yeah. It's stuck in Guyon Creek, yeah. I, uh, if, I, if I see anybody with a Mylar balloon, I'm going to pop it. Got several I, the same thing. I said i said i'm gonna take out my bb gun sorry birthday crashes <laughs> yeah just go popping kids birthday balloons it's good there was a kayak floating in it the other day yesterday too so yeah all right yeah. uh all right well we are uh, pretty much a wrap anything else in the last few minutes before we go i think i have december 9th is our next meeting why don't we victor when's your bot meeting when is the bot meeting i think it's the eighth Oh, really? Perfect timing. The seventh, the seventh. Okay, good. So we'll have an update from the BOT by then? Yep. On the, on the slate? Okay, good. All right, thanks, everyone. Have a nice evening. Bye, Bye. See you. Thank you. Take care, everybody. Okay, take care.